Hello and welcome to the 56th annual meeting. I am Joanne McGeeock, Deputy Director and Chief Development Officer at Delaware Nature Society. Thank you all for being here. We've got a great program today, which will highlight our achievements in 2020, despite incredible challenges. We will honor our outstanding award recipients and we're pleased to welcome US Representative Lisa Blunt Rochester as our guest speaker. Representative Blunt Rochester has been a champion for the environment and we are thrilled to have her here with us today. If you have questions or comments, please send them in the chat and we'll address them at the end of today's presentation during our question and answer session. Also just a tip for optimal viewing of the event, we recommend hiding the non-video participants by using speaker view side by side. And you can do this by going to the top right corner click view and select speaker. You will see view options and then choose side by side. Today is Earth Day. And as we've always said, Earth Day should be every day. And this year we've decided to do something a little different. We're honoring this Earth Day with a challenge for giving and action. To that end, a longtime generous donor has offered an incredibly generous challenge match this year in honor of Earth Day. All gifts up to $13,000 will be matched dollar for dollar. Please consider ways in which you can support our day of giving in action by visiting our website at www.dellnature.org or go to our Dell Nature Facebook page to learn more. We'll share more about this challenge match later on in the program. At this time, we'll now hear a pre-recorded message last week from our executive director, Ann Harper. Thank you, Joanne. And thanks to all of you joining us on Zoom today. We are grateful for your passion and your participation. The past 13 months have been like no other in recent memory. A year ago, none of us would have guessed that we'd, we would be here today on Zoom again. Many of us have spent more time in our homes and on Zoom than we ever thought possible. We have experienced loved ones and friends being ill, remote learning for our children and grandchildren in our homes, months of canceled activities, and endless uncertainty about the future. All of this has taken a toll. We lost friends, family, and community members, and may not have had the opportunity to gather to remember them. Please join me now to remember former staff and board members of Delaware Nature Society. Jean Beatty was the receptionist at Ashland Nature Center for several years. She was a joy to work with and very sweet. Jean was exactly the kind and pleasant person we want to represent Dell Nature. She had a wonderful sense of humor and was always a pleasure to chat with at the front desk. George Fisher, was a Monarch Legacy Society member, a generous donor and former board member. His involvement spanned more than three decades and included many roles as a member of our board of directors, treasurer, Abbotts Mill Advisory Council and Finance Committee member. In addition to his quick wit and financial expertise and extensive knowledge of our history, George, was always up for an outdoor adventure. Lowell Underhill, a board member for almost 20 years and a generous donor, had a lifelong love of nature. He loved to be outdoors, to hunt and to fish. Over the years, he served in many leadership roles at Dell Nature, including on the personnel, land and biodiversity management and advocacy committees. Lowell had a special place in his heart for Coverdale Farm Preserve. Matt Bailey was one of a kind. He had the soul of a poet and was kind to everyone. We honored Matt in 2020 as volunteer of the year. Matt filled many important roles, including as a greeter and provider of information for visitors at Ashland Nature Center and as an environmental policy advocate he built a career in environmental protection with a special focus on the conservation of endangered species. 
We were so lucky to have Matt on the Dell Nature team. Today, as we celebrate our current staff, board members, donors, volunteers, and all of you who have been loyal, active, and involved in Dell Nature through 2020, we also celebrate resiliency. Because of our creative staff and their openness to innovation, we found meaningful ways to connect with you in new forums, including virtually, and secured a sharp increase in our social media following and visits to our website. The Dell Nature staff kept our doors open, safely welcomed the community to our sites and trails, and adapted to the challenges of such a dynamic 2020. We continued to enjoy the support and engagement of over 140 active volunteers, recording a total of 4,360 volunteer hours in 2020. At Dell Nature, we modified our policies and operating procedures to adhere to state guidance on COVID prevention. We continue to meet or exceed public health guidelines to keep everyone safe. This spring, for the first time in a year, we were able to offer a full slate of nature walks and programs. We were pleased to safely offer summer camp in 2020 and look forward to connecting with our wonderful campers again in 2021. The trails at three of our sites remained open throughout the public health emergency, providing a valuable resource to the community. It is gratifying to have so many of you take advantage of this opportunity to connect with nature. Trail use at Dell Nature increased significantly in 2020. In the aftermath of the death of George Floyd, among too many others, Dell Nature re-examined its role as a leader and agent for change to ensure equity, justice, and inclusion for all. We formed board level and staff led diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice committees, DEIJ committees, to take a careful look at our policies, practices, outreach, programming, and much more across the entire organization. The board DEIJ committee is working to diversify the membership on our board and board committees. The staff DEIJ committee has created task groups focused on Dell Nature hiring practices, staff training, diversifying program audiences, and ensuring that our sites and communications are inclusive and accessible to all. We have made progress, but we absolutely have more work to do. Our role is to stand in solidarity with those working for justice and change. Outdoor recreational spaces and environmental policy are not exempt from the racism and inequality that is perpetuated throughout the nation. We must continue to actively work as an organization and a movement to make all feel welcomed, included, and safe. In 2020, we continued our focus on healthy waters, working in natural lands, and protecting, improving, protecting and improving habitats for wildlife through our core mission to educate, conserve, and advocate. Ashland Nature Center continues to be a hub for citizen science, nature-based education, and bird conservation and research. We conducted another successful hawk watch our 14th year through a long-standing partnership with Delaware Ornithological Society and the Delaware Division of Natural Resources and Environmental Control, DENREC. Our team at Ashland also led the way in Zoom classes, new in 2020, with the highly popular Master Naturalist program in partnership with the University of Delaware and innovative adult education programs through the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute. The DuPont Environmental Education Center, DEEC, continued its focus on connecting with Wilmington through RENEW. The RENEW program partners with communities of color in Wilmington 
to present after school programs at Brown Boys and Girls Club, Servium Academy, Kingswood Community Center, and Hicks Anderson Community Center. In partnership with the University of Delaware Water Resources Center and the City of Wilmington Parks and Recreation Department, we continued the Wilmington Youth Environmental Corps, which offered fall and spring sessions engaging teens from Wilmington in career development and outdoor education programs. In summer 2020, four Wilmington youth were hired as trail ambassadors, a workforce de development and science education program. Using Southbridge's new wetland park, the Markell Trail, Deke, and the Wilmington Riverfront, trail ambassadors explored, explored nature year round, learned to interpret the outdoors to the community and visitors, and mentored younger youth at Neighborhood House. In 2021, the program will double in size to involve eight Wilmington High School youth. At Coverdale Farm Preserve, we continue to implement regenerative and organic agriculture practices. Sheep, goats, cattle, laying hens, and turkeys graze and forage on our fenced pastures. In 2020, we constructed the Agriculture Education Building, which includes a small farm market. And in 2021, we will evolve our CSA, Community Supported Agriculture Program, into the Golden Tomato Flex, Flex Card, which offers all the benefits of the CSA, but with greater flexibility and more choices. The Golden Tomato Card, the farm market, and new farm programming opportunities will open at Coverdale on May 8. We are looking forward to an official ribbon cutting and opening celebration in June. Please join us. Abbott's Mill Nature Center remains a much loved destination in Milford with trails, paddling programs, education programs for all ages, and so much more. We saw a 222% increase in foot traffic on the trails at Abbott's Mill in spring 2020 compared to fall 2019. We engaged with the City of Milford Parks and Recreation Department to develop a public programming partnership for the Misbillion Riverwalk Greenway and continued pre-K through fifth grade programs with the Milford School District. These are now offered virtually in 2021. Our Marvel Salt Marsh Preserve is an eBird hotspot with 98 total observations of the native salt marsh sparrow, which is a bird listed on the conservation red watch list. In 2021, we are proud to celebrate Abbott's Mill Nature Center's 40th anniversary. Please join us for an anniversary celebration on May 22nd. There is more information on our website. Dell Nature's advocacy work remains strong and impactful. In 2020, we worked with the governor's office, state legislators, DENREC, Newcastle County, and the congressional delegation on a variety of environmental issues. We successfully advocated for millions of dollars in state funding for clean water, open space, and farmland preservation, and continued our involvement with county and local environmental policy. We worked with 3,200 water warrior advocates and incorporated diversity, equity, inclusion, and environmental justice as priorities in environmental policy. In 2020, the Dell Nature team, working with the Native Species Commission, laid the groundwork for the recent success with State Senate Bill 22, the Native Plant Sale Bill, which will prohibit plant nurseries from selling non-native invasive plant species. Dell Nature also supported State Senate Bill 33, which increases the percentage of electricity that must come from renewable sources. Our work in conservation continues to focus on protecting native wildlife habitats, restoring biodiversity, and preserving open spaces. 
We certified 45 wildlife habitats statewide, providing food, water, cover, and nurseries for young birds, bees, butterflies, and other wildlife. Our StreamWatch program monitored water quality by collecting data at 25 sites. This information contributes to a state database that allows trend analysis over multiple years. In 2020, we adapted. The native plant sale moved online, was offered in both the spring and the fall, and was available in both Northern and Southern Delaware. In this new COVID safe format, Dell Nature constituents purchased over 4,300 native plants, improving biodiversity in their backyards. Our spring sale this year will follow the same pattern. As members, you can shop online on May 1. Please join us. Dell Nature is fortunate to have a talented professional staff, many of significant tenure. Today, we recognize staff anniversaries of five, 10, and 15 years. Celebrating five years, Mindy Brown of Coverdale Farm. 10 years, Ed Rohrbach, a teacher naturalist at multiple sites. 15 years, David Pragoff, school and group, excuse me, school and group programs team leader, Hazel Shinholt, Abbott's Mill Nature Center, and Kathleen Zerba, a teacher naturalist also at multiple sites. In 2020, we welcomed two new staff to the Dell Nature team. Ruby Jimenez joined us to help us meet our COVID safety protocols for cleaning and sanitation. And Max Troyan joined our facilities and groundskeeping team. Over the last year, we were fortunate to have sufficient resources to retain our year-round staff, thanks to your participation and generosity. We look forward to greeting you in person this spring at our COVID safe programs and on our trails. Today, we have highlighted only a few of the achievements of 2020. Thank you to everyone who helped make this work possible. Your interest, participation, contributions, and advocacy are essential. Your dedication and support are vital to Dell Nature and made it possible for us to rise to the challenges of the past year. Our doors are still open because of you. Thank you. You are the heart of Dell Nature. I now welcome our Director of Business and Finance, Sherry Dill, to present our financial statements. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Although 2020 was a challenging year for so many, Delaware Nature Society proved it is a resilient organization with a mission and message that have been meaningful to so many during this pandemic. We have a dedicated staff, strong donor base, and constituents and members who value the organization and the programs we provide. The 2020 financials presented are unaudited. The auditors have started their audit and we anticipated, anticipate the audited financials to be pres presented in May. Some highlights of 2020 include the following. Unrestricted contribution revenue of over $440,000 which exceeded 2019 totals by over $70,000. Program revenue of over 400,000, including over 250,000 in summer camp revenue and strong results in virtual adult programs. Increase in contract revenue by $83,000, which includes contracts with the city of Wilmington Parks and Recs for Youth Environmental Corps and Green Jobs programs. Special events revenue of almost $90,000, which includes our first ever virtual native plant sale, as well as three intimate farm to fork dinners. Just over $20,000 in turkey and Christmas tree sales included in the other income category. And a PPP loan, which we hope to be forgiven, totaling $498,000. In addition, investment income for 2020 totaled $2.9 million, much of that unrealized gains as the markets recovered after significant losses at the beginning of the pandemic. 
Delaware Nature Society staff continue to be good stewards of our resources by controlling expenses. Total expenses have decreased by over $320,000 or about 7% from 2019 to 2020. Program expenses account for about 85% of all expenses. Education programs accounted for about 53% of program expenses. Land and biodiversity accounted for about 28% of the program expense line. And preservation and conservation activities accounted for about 18.5% of the program expenses in 2020. Our management in general or administrative expenses account for 8% of total expenses and fundraising expenses account for roughly 7% of all expenses. The total increase in that net assets was just about $1.6 million. In terms of our 2021 update, we started the first two months of 2021 by slightly exceeding our budget and are continually meeting and assessing the opportunities available to us to ensure that our business plan meet the needs of the community while keeping everyone safe as we begin to increase levels of engagement with our constituents. As we rebound from the challenges presented over the last year by COVID-19, we look to opportunities in 2021, which include applying for a second PPP loan to allow us to continue our work, building on the successes we had in 2020 with virtual programs by hosting a second online native plant sale and growing virtual adult programs such as the Master Naturalist program offered this past winter, increasing our 2021 camp offerings but still maintaining COVID safety protocol and exploring opportunities for a nature-based preschool at Ashland in the fall of 2021. Like so many others, Delaware Nature Society has faced many challenges in 2020. We expect that COVID-19 will continue to impact our finances through much of 2021. However, we are proud of our resilient and creative staff and are so very grateful for the continued support we receive from our volunteers, our donors, and our program participants. This support is vitally important, especially during these challenging times. Thank you. Thanks, Sherry. I'd now like to welcome Don Rittenhouse, President of the Board of Directors, to conduct the official business portion of our meeting. Don has spent the past five years serving on our board, three of those in leadership roles. Dawn, Dawn's term as board president is complete, but she's staying on as a member of the Board of Directors. Thanks so much for your service. Thanks, Joanne. Um, it's now time to commence the business portion of our meeting. As we all recognize at this time, 2020 was a challenging year as the organization continued to deliver our mission of education, conservation, and advocacy. Since filming Anna Sherry's remarks, I'm pleased to announce that Dell Nature received forgiveness for last year's federal Paycheck Protection Program Loan, I like PPP better, <laughs> which was created to help small businesses. We came out of 2020 in a solid financial position, thanks in part to the wonderful generosity of our donors. Delaware Nature Society has an extremely active board serving in various capacities from finance and fundraising to assuring that we are being in fact impactful with our education, conservation, and advocacy work. Our board members continue to champion our work and help advance the success and impact in the community. Before electing our new board members, I would like to thank the directors that have completed their terms of service. Outgoing board members, Mark Carter, who served from 2015 to 2021, Barbara Greenwald, who served from 2015 to 2021, Jeff Haas, who served from 2018 to 2021, and JJ Francis, who served from 2018 to 2021. Thank you for all your time and wisdom that you shared with Delaware Nature Society. On behalf of the Governance Committee, I will now present the slate of nominees for election to the Board of Directors. Nominees to the Board for their first term, Class of 2024, is Margareta Federich, Richard Stuckey, Brad DuPont, and Andy Witherell. Nominees to the board for the second term class of 2024 are Blair McConnell, Adele McIntosh, and Suzanne Smith. I invite all members to unmute, unmute your mics at this time to make a vote. May I have a motion to elect these nominees to the board? So move. Do I have a second? A second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? 
Thank you very much. Um, delegates to the National Wildlife Federation annual meeting are Emily Neural with Ann Harper as the alternate. The following officers are nominated for election to the board of directors for a one year term and will be vo voted on at the next board meeting. Officers standing for election include Eric Brinsfield, president, Dan Barbado, vice president, Adele McIntosh, treasurer, and Nikki Taylor, secretary. At this time, I'd like to turn the program over to uh, Tina Ridgren, Director of Education and Operations. Hello, everyone, and thank you, Dawn. Delaware is fortunate to have many exceptional teachers and administrators who work tirelessly preparing their students to become knowledgeable, informed citizens. Less common, but no less valuable, are those who strive to instill a sense of environmental appreciation in young people. Using creative lessons, impactful projects, and meaningful outdoor experiences, these teachers are consistently breaking new ground, often literally, to inspire future stewards of the natural world. Delaware Nature Society established the Outstanding Environmental Educator of the Year Award in 1982 to acknowledge and thank those teachers who are inspired to inspire. We are proud to recognize educators who go above and beyond to ensure their students develop a sense of responsibility and passion for the natural world. This year, we are honored to recognize two outstanding con contributors, I'm sorry, two outstanding contributions in this field. They are Katie Pollock and Carrie Wilson. Their passion for education and the environment has led them separately and collaboratively to develop model programs that will have positive impact for many years to come. Katie is a master teacher for the Outdoor Nature Preschool Program at the University of Delaware Lab School. In this role, Katie leads a classroom of three and four year olds in daily self discovery and exploration of the natural world. She works to cultivate their innate sense of wonder and curiosity while fostering their social, physical, cognitive language development. Additionally, Katie is deeply invested in preparing the next generation of educators to know the benefit of nature-based programming. She leads professional development workshops for educators and teaches a course for undergraduate students at the university that extol the virtues of outdoor learning. Katie mentors aspiring preschool teachers at the lab school and recently, she has begun working with colleagues to develop a master's degree certifi certification program focused on nature-based early learning education. Carrie Wilson is the Director of Outdoor Education and Lower School Science and Technology teacher for St. Anne's Episcopal School, located on the North Shore of Silver Lake in Middletown, Newcastle County. While St. Anne's is fortunate to be located on 125 acres, the property's history of human activity and construction of the school building resulted in limited functional habitats and ecosystems to support wildlife. Carrie guided the development of a multi-year plan to increase the long-term sustainability and resiliency of the campus and ensure access to green spaces for all the children. Implementation of this plan has included prescribed burnings, the establishment of habitat gardens, meadows, and tree planting, specifically to support native birds and the creation of 22 separate outdoor classroom spaces. Students are involved in all aspects of these activities to instill a sense of ownership, resiliency, and progression. Through problems-based learned lessons and innovative projects, students have conducted habitat assessments and constructed nest boxes and insect hotels. Carrie has actively engaged with community partners to provide professional training for her colleagues. She has shared her knowledge presenting at the Delaware Naturally Initiative for the Delaware Invasive Species Council and is this year's keynote speaker for the Delaware Association for Environmental Education's annual conference. It is my sincere pleasure to recognize Katie and Carrie as recipients of this year's Outstanding Environmental Educator of the Year Award. Congratulations and thank you for the valuable work you do in inspiring the next generation of environmental stewards and global citizens. And now I would like to introduce Emily Neural. 
Director of Advocacy and External Affairs to present this year's Environmental Steward Award. Good afternoon. My name is Emily Neural, and I'm the Director of Advocacy and External Affairs for the Delaware Nature Society. I'm so pleased to join you today to celebrate our 2021 Environmental Steward of the Year, House Majority Leader and State Representative Valerie Longhurst. I will actually be reading from a tribute provided by the Governor's Office. On behalf of Delawareans across the first state, we are so pleased to recognize Delaware Nature Society Environmental Steward of the Year, Valerie Longhurst. In her 17 years in the General Assembly, she's shown a long-standing commitment to fighting for clean water in the environment. As the prime sponsor of House Bill 200, she revitalized the Clean Water for Delaware Act. She's also made significant impacts through her work to support green infrastructure solutions and address rising waters due to climate change. I'm so pleased to introduce State Representative Valerie Longhurst as we thank her for all her good work in protecting the environment. Thank you, Delaware Nature Society. I am truly honored and humbled to have been chosen to receive this year's Environmental Steward Award. The oath that we take when we are sworn into office as a state representative contains one very important line that I don't believe gets enough attention. And that is in the oath that we swear to respect the right of the future generations to share the rich historic and natural heritage of Delaware. That one line challenges us as elected officials to think beyond the present, beyond the span of a two-year legislative session or a four-year governor's term and consider how the actions that we take will affect the generations that come after us, our children, grandchildren, and beyond. Very simply, it is our sworn duty to preserve our state's natural beauty and protect our air, land, and water. After years of hard work, we are about to take a huge step toward fulfilling that duty. With House Bill 200, the Clean Water Act for Delaware, we will establish a framework for investing in the future of our water quality in Delaware that will pay dividends for many years to come. Whether it's water or wastewater infrastructure to support smart development in Newcastle County, the needs of our agricultural industry downstate, the challenges of our coastal communities faced with the flooding and sea level rise, or the inequities in our underserved communities statewide, so much falls under the banner of clean water in Delaware. Starting with the 50 million in the bond bill funding, which I'm proud to say is included in the governor's recommended budget, we will begin to make up for many years of inaction when water quality projects were often at the bottom of the list for resources and support. I can't wait to celebrate with all of you when House Bill 200 is signed into law and then begin putting those funds to good use across our state. I wanna thank the Delaware Nature Society for their tremendous dedication and commitment for HB 100. And we wouldn't be here today without you and many other advocates that have gotten us to this point. So thank you so much for this award, but I share it with all of you because it takes all of us to get this done. So thank you very much. Thank you, Representative Longhurst. We are so pleased that Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester has joined us today as our keynote speaker. She has represented Delaware in the US House of Representatives since 2016 and provided leadership on a variety of important issues, including environmental justice and clean water funding. Representative Blunt Rochester sits on the exclusive House Committee on Energy and Commerce which has broad jurisdiction over health, environment, commerce, trade, and trade. Before being elected to Congress in 2016, she served in the cabinets of two Delaware governors as Secretary of Labor and State Personnel Director. She also served as Senior Executive Leadership and Systems Manager for the Institute for Community Inclusion at the University of Massachusetts, Boston, and as CEO of the Metropolitan Wilmington Urban League, an action-oriented public policy research think tank. 
Earlier in the program, I talked about diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice. Those remarks were recorded before the verdict in the trial of Derek Chauvin on Tuesday. We think it is important to both acknowledge his conviction and at the same time, recognize the need for holistic policy changes to abolish systems of oppression. For those of you that were following the coverage closely, you may have seen this photo of the representative standing with her Congressional Black Caucus colleagues awaiting the verdict. Lisa Blunt Rochester is a powerful voice for change. We are so grateful that the representative has joined us today. Representative? Thank you so much, Anne, for that not only kind, but um, powerful introduction. I, I greatly appreciate it. And thank you for showing that photo of, of that moment. Um, uh, actually, I was on my phone and other members were around watching on a laptop. Um, for some reason, my phone was a minute ahead. And so many of them turned to watch on our, on my phone. And um, it was a, a moment of, as we, many of us said, relief, um, but not yet full joy. And so I thank the uh, Delo Delaware Nature Society, Del Nature, for inviting me to speak at your annual meeting. I, I wanna thank the leadership, the staff, the board, the funders, the volunteers, to the trail ambassadors. We in Delaware are so grateful for all that you do and that you are leading the way. And to our educators of the year, uh, Katie and Carrie, congratulations and thank you for teaching Delaware's youth to appreciate and respect nature. I also wanna congratulate my good friend Val Longhurst on being named Environmental Steward of the Year. She is a true champion for the environment and what was also um, noteworthy to me is as in most situations, she didn't take all the credit. She recognized that it really is a, a, a team effort. And so um, I wanna congratulate her as well on an honor well-deserved. Today is the 51st Earth Day, as you all know. And while there is still much work that needs to be done to combat the effects of climate change, it's important to recognize the work that people are doing in our state to create a healthy and more sustainable planet, which is why I am so proud to celebrate Earth Day with Dell Nature today, and why I'm so proud to recognize the important work that you do for our state. I actually didn't wear green or blue. I wore yellow um, to represent the sun. And uh, hopefully today um, you will feel some of the light uh, that is being brought on because of your efforts. I want to specifically thank again, all of the volunteers and community members who make this work possible. Uh, we know that it wouldn't happen without you and your work to educate and advocate for our planet is a, of critical importance in the larger global fight against climate change. Uh, for me, uh, today also marks a special day because it feels as if it is official. The United States is back in the global fight against climate change. And with the White House Earth Day Summit, our president, Delaware's own Joe Biden, is leading the way with the most ambitious climate agenda in our country's history, cutting emissions by half in, by 2030. It's a moonshot moment that will require all of us to play our part. As I think about playing our part, I think about the role that nature has played in my life. And um, some of you know that uh, this year I turned 59. And so if you do the math, you knew I, I grew up in the 60s and in the 70s um, during a movement that mul multiple movements from civil rights to black power to the women's movement but it was also a time when we focused on, at that time, I remember we called it ecology, um, but it was really about the earth and protecting it and focusing on pollution and things that were killing this planet. I also just remember being a little girl and 
you know, not necessarily having a background or having some of the experiences that Dell Nature is giving to young people today, but just the basics of laying on my back on grass, looking up at the beautiful sky, watching the clouds move and thinking how beautiful or going down to the creek near where I lived um, and just walking along and seeing little tadpoles and thinking, man, this is, this is incredible. But I also was that kid who remembered the commercials and the things out there telling us to give a hoot and don't pollute, that we should care. I will tell you, it is another reason why the work that Dell Nature is doing is so important. Because a few, maybe it was a few weeks ago, earlier this year, I had the pleasure of meeting with representatives from Dell Nature to discuss many of the great things that you're doing. But I was really impressed by the Renew Signature programs. You know, programs that would encourage young people to be in the outdoors and also to pursue STEM opportunities. By instilling a love of nature and educating the youth of Delaware on the impacts of climate change, we are doing one of the most important things that we can do for the climate cause. It's something that is paramount to me. We are creating the future climate leaders. Delawareans, we see the impacts of climate change every, every single day. I mean, Val actually talked about it, you know, as the state with the lowest mean elevation in the country, and as the state that is urban, suburban, rural, and coastal, we see the impacts of climate change from our neighborhoods, such as South Bridge, when it rains and floods, to the farms in Kent County or Sussex, where farmers might not know when to plant or if there's gonna be a change in the season, to our beaches. We know that climate change is real. And addressing climate change has to be a top priority. The good news with the new, with the new leadership at the White House and in the Senate and in the House, we have an opportunity to pass legislation that can tackle this crisis in a just and equitable way, create jobs and improve our health status. As was mentioned, I am proud to serve on the Energy and Commerce Committee. And I was especially proud to get on the Environment and Climate Change Subcommittee. Um, it was important for me to be able to represent our state and to be able to directly be involved in legislation protecting our planet. I, I will tell you, the committee is so coveted that um, they don't even let freshmen on it. And so I started working the, the, to figure out how I could get on in my first term. And I am so glad that I have a seat at the table because we all know that climate change is an existential threat. And there is no greater challenge facing us as a country or, or, or a world. And so in the last Congress, in the 116th, under the leadership of Representative Kathy Castor from Florida, she co-chaired or she chaired the select committee on the climate crisis. And in that Congress, we built the framework to address climate change. Now in the 117th Congress, it is time for climate action. And as we rebuild our economy in the wake of COVID-19, we need to focus on how we can create a cleaner and more sustainable and equitable America. In January, the Energy and Commerce Committee introduced the Clean Future Act, which outlines an ambitious plan for the US to achieve net zero greenhouse gas pollution by 2050. I was proud to secure several key provisions in this legislation that would benefit Delaware from making our public facilities more energy efficient and resilient to reducing carbon emissions at our nation's ports and improving air quality across the country. These provisions will work toward creating a cleaner future, not only for America, but also for Delaware. In addition, we reintroduced the Environmental Justice for All Act earlier this year, because as we all know, these changes are especially important for black, brown, indigenous, and low wealth communities that face the hardships and the impacts of climate change even more profoundly. I'm a proud co-sponsor of this bill, not only for the important investments that it would make in our environmental justice community, 
but also because of the important role that environmental justice organizations played in drafting the bill. Too often, EJ communities are excluded from conversations on the very policies that directly impact them, perpetuating underinvestment in these communities. While the pandemic continues and has exasperated these concerns in EJ communities, we know that these issues are not new. Generations of inequalities and injustices have based this environmental burden on EJ communities. We need to make sure that our environmental justice communities are represented and have a seat at the table. And that's why on this 51st Earth Day, I am so excited for the wins, the win-wins of climate change legislation, from creating sustainable and good paying jobs to creating better health outcomes, to ensuring real equity for our communities. Addressing climate change benefits every single one of us. For me, our charge is clear. We must recover from this pandemic, rebuild in a way that is just, and restore our planet. I'll leave you with this thought from an environmental justice panel that I recently participated in. It came from Chief Dennis Coker of the Delaware Lenape tribe, who spoke about how the tribe, in the tribe he said, they're conditioned to think of this planet, not just in terms of themselves or even their children, but in terms of the seven generations that will follow. And so my challenge to all of us you know, as you think about this is that even if you can't think seven generations ahead, think one generation, think two generations. Because in order for us to preserve this beautiful planet for them and for ourselves, it is our obligation to act now. Again, thank you so much to all of the staff and volunteers at Dell Nature for all that you do to love this planet. That's why we're here, to love ourselves in a positive way, to love each other, to love this planet. And if you believe in God, love God. Thank you so much for everything that you do. And I look forward to working with you as we move toward the 52nd Earth Day. Take care. Thank you so very much, Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester. What a pleasure to have you join us this evening. And your words are so inspiring. We look forward to working with you going forward. Thank, Thank you. you. Now I'd like to turn over the floor to Joanne McGeeock, who will update us on our fundraising and especially on our Earth Day of Giving Challenge, uh, giving us the totals for today. Joanne. Thanks so much, Anne. Thank you to the thousands of volunteers, members, and donors who've been integral to the success of our organization over the last five decades. Last year was an incredibly challenging year for so many nonprofits, including Delaware Nature Society, but our base of supporters remains consistent, loyal, and strong. We had a tremendous outpouring of support from donors and members whose generosity provides essential operating support to help us fulfill our mission. With challenges in providing our more traditional in-person services and programs during the pandemic, your generosity and support over this past year really has made all the difference, so thank you. I also wanna thank the members of our Monarch Legacy Society who've made a lasting impact on Delaware Nature Society by including us in their estate plans. As you may know, our organization was fortunate to have had early founding members and board members who recognized that establishing our endowment is essential to ensure the long-term financial stability and sustainability of Delaware Nature Society. Evidence of this can be seen in our strong financial standings, whereas restricted and unrestricted endowment funds support so many of our important programs and initiatives, including our education programs for children through scholarship funding, our advocacy work engaging legislators, policy and decision makers and advancing our environmental priorities, as well as our conservation mission by ensuring 
the proactive management and protection of land, open space, healthy habitats, and clean water. All Monarch Legacy Society gifts are invested in our endowment and contribute over time to ensure our commitment to protecting and improving the environment while sustaining our ability to serve our community for generations to come. Last year, we received a generous bequest from a longtime supporter, Virginia Merriman. Virginia became involved with us through our eco tours and took a memorable trip with former executive Mike Riska. Her experiences with us made a lasting impression. Proceeds of the Merriman estate have contributed directly to our endowment and board reserves in adherence with our gift policy. If you're interested in leaving a legacy through a planned gift to Delaware Nature Society, please contact me. Remember the old adage, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago, the second best time is today. Like planting a tree, your legacy contribution will bear fruit years from now, benefiting future generations for decades to come. As we shared earlier in the program, this year we're commemorating Earth Day with a day of giving and action. A longtime donor who's chosen to remain anonymous has offered an incredibly generous challenge match this year in honor of Earth Day. All gifts, as we mentioned, up to $13,000 are matched dollar for dollar. And as of 5 p.m. today, I'm so proud to share we've raised $26,385. That is remarkable. We met and exceeded our goal of $25,000 in one day. Thank you so much to everyone that has supported our Earth Day of Giving in Action, as these gifts contribute directly to our efforts to raise awareness for and action to improve and protect the environment. So even though the challenge match has been achieved, let's keep the momentum going. Please visit our website at www.delnature.org to make a gift online. And be sure to check our Facebook page tomorrow to see the final results. Thank you again for the many ways you helped to advance our important work as volunteers, members, and donors to the Delaware Nature Society. Thank you to all of our members, volunteers, donors, and program participants for supporting us through 2020 and beyond. Your support enables us to continue our important work providing environmental education, advocacy, and land protection on a statewide, regional, and national level. We cannot do this without you. From all of us at Delaware Nature Society, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of myself and all the birds and our bird conservation project, we thank you. Thank you all so much for joining us this evening for our 56th annual meeting. I hope it's been as impactful and inspiring for you as it has been for us. We are here because of your support. Thank you to our donors, members, volunteers, and program participants. This is now our opportunity for a Q&A with Dawn Rittenhouse, board chair, and with me. But before we get started, I would like again to thank you, Dawn, for your years of leadership on the board. We look forward to working together as we go forward. Thanks so much. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. Let's open the floor for questions. If you have a question, please put your question in the chat. Annalie, do you have any questions for us so far? Yes, Anne. Um, I do have a question. Uh, 2020 was such a challenging year. Uh, what would you say about Dell Nature's financial position? So fortunately, um, with the support of the community, with innovative programs and a very talented staff, we have come through 2020 with resiliency and strength. So we are moving into 2021 with uh, some new success in virtual programs that has expanded our audience in adult education, with strong community support for our summer camp program, which will adhere to all of the state guidelines uh, for COVID safe programming. And we've also had um, very strong support from our members and donors uh, to see us through the past year. Thank you. 
you make a difference. Thank you so much. And I'd also like to add in, um, you know, I was so impressed by how the staff really pivoted and stepped up and got creative, um, how quickly they were able to change things like the native plant sale and, uh, and the summer camps, make sure that people could do it safely, but we're still outside and benefiting from nature. So um, the staff deserves a tremendous amount of kudos for what they accomplished in 2020. Um, and, oh, sorry. Excuse me, go ahead. Dell Nature offered Zoom classes for the first time in 2020. How did they go? Well, I have to say our Zoom classes for adult uh, program participants have really surprised us and expanded our audience statewide. So we found great success with lecture programs on Zoom and field trips offered at multiple locations in the state concurrently so that everyone has the opportunity to participate. It's been quite exciting. I, I'm sure that many who are attending today have participated in either uh, the Master Naturalist Program, the Advanced Naturalist Program, the Osher Lifelong Learning Programs that we've done. You've inspired us. Thank you so very much. This will be a new component of our um, ongoing programs. And I have to say, we may never have tried it except for the pandemic. Thank you. And this is Aaron. We did have another question uh, come in. If we donate to the match, uh, do we have to do anything special to, uh, to get that match? Um, and I just wanted to take an opportunity to answer this. You do not have to do anything special. Um, just visit the website. There's a donate button at the top of the page. Uh, as long as your donation is uh, marked by the end of today, uh, it gets counted. So I definitely encourage everybody to uh, visit our website and make that donation. Thank you. Thank you all for your support. It's, it's so inspiring and such a vote of confidence for us. I, I really appreciate your stepping up. Thank you very much. There are no more questions at this time. Well, thank you all for joining us for our 56th annual meeting. Thank you for your loyalty, your involvement, your generosity, your opportunities to stop in and say hello when you walk on our trails. We are here because of you. Thank you. You make a, a huge difference. You're the heart of our organization. You're very appreciated. Thank you. Dawn? And I'd like to second that. Thank you very much for, uh, for all the support. It was great to be at Ashland and see people using the trails um, throughout 2020. So we hope to see you there at Ashland, at Deke, at Abbott's, um, at Coverdale to take uh, advantage of the uh, new market. Um, and uh, thank you again for all of your support and for the exciting news that Joanne had that uh, we uh, exceeded our goals. So that's, that's fabulous, thank you. Thanks so much. This is then the conclusion of our virtual annual meeting for 2020. Thanks for joining us. Take care.